Hello, everyone. My name is Diamond. I'm going to present my research with my colleagues at the University of California, Riverside, how to build kernel fuzzing odds with reinforcement learning. Fuzzing is simple in principle. The fuzzer generates many different test inputs, sends them to the target program, and see if the program crashes. Fuzzing is also an art. There are a large number of parameters that can be tuned, which will affect the fuzzer's effectiveness to find crashes. Kernel fuzzing is even more complex, which is large code space, unique system call interfaces, and concurrency considerations. To perform effective fuzzing in the kernel space, syscaller, the state of art kernel fuzzer, utilizes an ever-growing template database to generate valid input for the kernel. This color also incorporates numerous decisions based on strong intuitions, domain expertise, empirical testing, and tuning. The figure on the right shows the workflow of this color. There are three types of tasks. Generation, which crafts a test input from scratch based on the syscall templates. Mutation, which modifies an existing test input. Triage, which takes an input program that finds new coverage, re-executes it for several times to make sure a new coverage can be reliably reproduced, and then tries to make it smaller and add it to the seed pool for future mutations. Since color have its fuzzing strategies hard-coded, problem is they might not fit all situations. For example, since color gives triage highest priority, then mutation, then generation. However, if we start this color from scratch, we actually found that the generation is actually quite powerful early on. For about one to three hours, depends on how much kernel is being fast. Looking at the left figure. Another example is that whenever this color finds a new seed, it will force 100 mutations out of it. This creates a huge backlog for seed program waiting for others to finish their 100 mutations. Not all seeds are good enough for 100 mutation as well. So you can take a look at the right figure. Based on our observations so far, the best strategies evolves over time and static ad hoc decisions can be harmful. So the question is, can we use reinforcement learning to improve this? Hence, we propose this Vegas, where we will test scheduling and C-selection as uh, adversarial multi-armed bandit problems, MAB. In the MAB problem, there is a gambler, aka this caller, facing a number of slot machines, each with a different reward function. In this caller, this is a choice to task, schedule, and C to mutate. The gambler, without knowing the inner working of the slot machines, needs to play them to find out how rewarding they are, and then devise a strategy to maximize the reward. In the adversarial MAB scenario, the reward of the slot machines can change over time. So the gambler, aka its color, needs to adapt to these changes. We believe adversarial MAB is a great fit for the problem. It's lightweight, don't care about internal states, and can adapt to the changing rewards, making it perfect to optimize coverage reached per unit time. There are two challenges. First, how to assess the reward. We want to guide the MAB algorithm towards optimizing coverage reached per unit time. Second, how to adapt. We want AMAB to recognize the change in season task rewards and adapt its strategy accordingly. We need a single reward metric that captures coverage and time spent. Then to do that, let's go back to the gambler slot machine analogy. So when our gambling syscaller picks a slot machine to play, it needs to pay a time cost and the slot machine yields a coverage reward. Time and coverage are in different currency. So we need to establish a conversion rate. This can be intuitively done by looking at the total time elapsed and the total coverage achieved. Therefore, the actual reward can be measured as the new coverage achieved 
converted to unit time minus the time cost. Things are slightly different for triage. Triage task does not generate much coverage, but produces seed program, which can be data mutated to find new coverage. It also tries to reduce the size of the seed program to save time later. So we will take these two contributions into considerations when we mutated the program later. When mutation yields coverage rewards, we will distribute a, a portion of the reward to the triage task, acknowledging its contribution to the mutation task. With the reward model settled, we can build our adversarial MAB algorithm for task selection. We use EXP3 based algorithm, which gives a good choices, exponential growth in their probability of being selected. Since the reward of tasks can change arbitrarily, we reset accumulated rewards for each task choice periodically. C selection is similar. Since it only occurs in mutation, so the algorithm is slightly different. The conversion rate is different as they should not count the time and the coverage incurred from generation and triage task. There's no need to split the reward. And the number of Cs is ever increasing, so the algorithm needs to adapt to that. Finally, we know that the reward of the individual seed is a diminishing function, so there is no need to reset. So we run Sys Vegas allows us its color and fast Linux kernel 5.6.13 for 24 hours. The figure on the left shows the coverage achieved. We observe that uh, with Sys Vegas C selection, coverage is significantly improved over vanilla Sys color. If we add in task selection, the coverage is even better. Breaking down the coverage by task, we found that as we expect, the task selection makes generation contributes much more coverage. With C selection, mutation becomes much more effective. If you look at how many tasks are executed by the fuzzer, it's obvious that the Sys Vegas performs much more generation than the Valena Sys color. We find that Sys Vegas is also capable of performing 10 times more mutations. This is because with C selection, Sys Vegas favors seed program that takes shorter time to execute. We then take a look at how the adversarial MAB algorithm behaves during the fuzzing process. We see that with both C selection and task selection, MAB quickly decides that mutation is better than generation. But without C selection, mutation is not as effective as uh, MAB will actually go back to favoring generation from time to time. When it comes to triage, we found that the Sys Vegas gave it a very low priority for four to 10 hours. And when triage do become valuable, the MAB is very quick to make the switch, giving triage absolute priority, just like Valinda Sys color. We then look at C programs generated by the fuzzers. Interestingly, we find that when task selection, Sys Vegas generates lamp C programs. However, the effectiveness of the C program is much better comparing to vanilla Sys color. Finally, we extend the fuzzing duration from one day to seven days. We then find that Sys Vegas is still capable of maintaining its lead over Sys color. Also, in practice, fuzzing is often performed with a starting seed corpus, so we tested that as well. Our experiment shows that Sith Vegas makes better use of the initial seed corpus. There are some other experiments we conducted. This is not covering the presentation. Please check out the paper. We also collected the crashes found in the seven day experiment and found that Sith Vegas can find more coverage, more crashes thanks to its increased coverage. Unfortunately, only a few can be reliably reproduced and at the time of making these slides, all crashes are fixed in the latest Linux kernel. So we demonstrate that adversarial MAB works very well in kernel fuzzing, despite not having a state definition like the other more advanced reinforcement learning algorithms. 
it can still adapt to the changing rewards very quickly and has a very low performance overhead, which we measure at 2.1%. MAB assumes that the gambler does not know the internals of the slot machines, but that's not necessarily the case in kernel fuzzing. We can surely use some methods like static analysis in public execution to know the inner workings of the OS kernel. It will be an interesting future direction to combine MAB with these white box methods. Finally, in our work, we only applied MAB on two problems. There are many other parameters in the syscaller that can benefit from learning-based approaches, such as the size of the program, mutation, operator choice, etc. The syscaller team actually has a list in this link, so feel free to take a try if you are interested. In conclusion, we identify opportunities to optimize syscaller. We propose this Vegas use reinforced learning to dynamically improve the odds of finding new coverage. We open source our code used in the paper and are making progress to upstream our work to syscaller. That concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to contact either me or my professor. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the conference.